My name is Robin Moran, and I'm the curator of ferns and lycophytes in the uh, New York Botanical Garden in the Bronx. And I've been coming down to Costa Rica for about the past 30 years doing research on ferns. And for the past 13 years, I've taught a course, Tropical Plant Systematics, for the Organization for Tropical Studies. And uh, the course is taught in Spanish in the odd years and, and uh, English in the even years. And this is one of the places we come and we, we study plants. And on our first course, we were walking down these stairs here, and we found an unusual hybrid fern, and that's what I want to tell you about today. I want to tell you about two hybrid ferns. Um, uh, the, the first one on this first clip will be an adiantum. And hybridization is not just some unusual little botanical phenomenon. That's, that's a curious phenomenon. It's a very important evolutionary mechanism in ferns. And so I want to tell you about that. And I'll show you this first adiantum, which is right down the trail here. Okay, here we are uh, on the stairs, and this is where I first found this hybrid population of the maidenhair fern. And we were walking down the stairs with the class. We were, we were looking for plants to, to review, and I found this fern here, and I noticed that the apex of the fern looked like this species of adiantum, which is very common along the trails here at La Selva. And uh, what was odd is it had more penny pairs, more leaflets than usual, and the base was cut. The basal penny were, were themselves cut into pinules, and that was a, a very unusual thing. There's another species here, which is twice pinnate, and um, that suggested that this plant was a hybrid between the first parent, which is once pinnate, divided once, and uh, the second parent, which has twice pinnate leaves. So we thought this might be a hybrid, and what we did is we then looked at the underside of the leaf and we tried to find sori. Sori are clusters of spore cases where the spores are produced. And we then took this back to the lab and with a dissecting needle we removed some of these sporangia and we put those sporangia in a drop of water and on a, on a glass uh, microscope slide in a, on a drop of water and we put a cover slip over that and then we tap that cover slip to kind of break the sporangia and the spores are extruded and we looked at the spores and the spores were a mess. They were aborted, they were misshapen, they were blackened and they were, they're non-viable like that. They are, um, uh, they will not germinate. If you sow them, they, they will not grow. And that's a characteristic of hybrids. Hybrids are, have sterile aborted spores and that's one of the nice things about working with ferns is that we can easily check the spores to see whether they're aborted, and that's a test for hybridity. And what happened here, I think, is that this area that is uh, behind me, it used to be kept open, and all of the supplies at the river station, which is above us, used to come through here. They used to cross the river in a boat and bring the supplies up here, and all of this was kept open. It was cut, it had grass, and that disturbed the soil. Just the actions of cutting the, the, the grass disturbed the soil, and disturbed soil is where gametophytes, fern gametophytes, love to grow. The fern gametophytes grow when spores come in and land and germinate, fern spores. And the spores of the two parental species came in here and they intermixed. There was a cross fertilization and we had this hybrid formed. And I think that the hybrid here that we see along here and up the stairs, there's a big population of it, is probably all from one hybridization event. The hybrid has a creeping rhizome that inherits from one of the parents, and probably all of this is a single colony formed from the action of this creeping rhizome, just from vegetative reproduction. And um, uh, so it's probably all from the same uh, hybridization event, the same genotype. So again, we've got this, this once pinnate apex, which suggests one of the parents, and then we've got these basal pinnae, which are themselves pinnate and that suggests the second parent. And I want to show you upstairs, uh, I want to lay out the two parents and show you the extremes, and then you're going to see how this hybrid is morphologically intermediate. Here we are with the maidenhair ferns that we just collected uh, that along the stairs that go down to the Rio Puerto Viejo. Here is one of the parents, Adiantum latifolium, 
And here is another one of the parents, Adiantum petiolatum. And in between are the hybrids. And I put more of the hybrids in between because the hybrid is more variable. And uh, you can see how, how variable it is, especially if you look at the base of the plants. The one parent here, Adiantum petiolatum, is once pinnate. We have the petiole or leaf stalk here. And what you don't see here is the rhizome. The rhizome or stem is in the ground, and I didn't dig it up, but here it is, the petiole. This is the lamina, the flat green part of the, the blade. And here it is, the lamina is divided into separate segments, and these separate segments are called pinny. Here is the second species, Adiantum latifolium, and the pinny are themselves divided into separate segments. So this leaf is twice pinnate, this leaf is once pinnate, and the hybrid is really intermediate. And what we first noticed was the apical part of the hybrid looking like this parent. But it was doing funny things at the base. These basal pinny here were becoming divided and enlarged like this, and as in this parent. And what we found was the whole transition between something like this, which is relatively undivided, and these basal pinny becoming more and more divided, more and more divided, and so on. And in some cases, we found the hybrid with up to two or three pairs of pinny. And I couldn't find any this time, but you can see on this individual over here, the basal pair, both pairs are divided. And the pair above them is a little bit more divided, just, just a little bit. So these are really intermediate between these two extremes. And again, once we saw this intermediacy and we suspected hybridization, we brought the plants into the lab, checked the spores, and they were aborted non-viable spores. Hybridization is a very important phenomenon in, in ferns. It's not just some mere botanical curiosity. About a fifth of the North American fern flora is known to be a result of hybridization followed by a process of chromosome doubling called polyploidy. And once the chromosome number doubles, and there's various ways that this can happen, once the chromosome number doubles, the plants are instantly fertile. Instead of getting aborted, misshapen spores, you get normal spores. And the plants can then reproduce, have a range that can extend beyond that of their parents, and they can reproduce sexually and become a normal species. And again, about a fifth of the North American fern flora has evolved this way, and this is an extremely important evolu evolutionary mechanism in ferns. We know very little about hybridization in the tropics, and even less about hybridization followed by polyploidy, chromosome doubling in the tropics. It's a wide open field for investigation, and I'm sure that many of the tropical species uh, have evolved by this process of hybridization followed by chromosome doubling, but we just don't know anything about it. So hybridization, what I've shown you here, is just, just not a, a little curiosity. It's a really an important uh, process, and um, this is an outstanding example of it. And in the second video clip, I'm going to show you another hybrid in the fern genus Lomeriopsis, which is down the trail out here, and uh, we'll take a look at it.